Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Please subscribe for more of these videos more often. Today, I'm trying something a little bit new. I'm sick of all these YouTube videos posing the same questions. Is this Rolex homage better than the original? No, come on, overdone. Today, I'm posing a slightly different question. Is this Tudor homage better than a... It's more original than Rolex. No, I really am trying something different today. I'm gonna to be breaking my reviews down into four key categories. Design, movement, price, and execution, which is basically the fit and finishing plus crystal and loom. That sounded like two categories or maybe even four. I ain't going above four, which is probably something that Prince Andrew once said to Jeffrey Epstein. I'll then aggregate those scores to give an overall score out of 10 based on subcategories which I'll put on screen later. It sounds a bit convoluted and complicated, but honestly, by definition, if I came up with it, it's not complicated. In fact, some people might think I'm oversimplifying my reviews, but I can assure you that I've given this real consideration and I'm going to make sure all of my videos are still comprehensive and thorough and give you as best and as accurate picture of the watch as possible. I appreciate that there will be some overlap between categories and I also understand that the subcategories themselves only add up to, to nine points, but I'll be awarding, or not as the case may be, a bonus point based on what I'll call watch magic, that strange and effervescent quality that watches can have that mean that it's more than the sum of its parts or just its specs on paper. Okay, is that all clear? Put your hand down onto the first category. So first up to face the first of the categories and the first of these reviews, it's the San Martin homage to the Tudor Black Bay GMT, the one with the Pepsi bezel. You won't have seen a paid promotion thing up in the corner or anything like that because this is 100% my watch. I bought it with my own money and even if I'd received a discount or a watch had been gifted or whatever, then that wouldn't change my opinion or the way I express it. I review a lot of San Martin watches because they're in a comfortable price bracket for me. People might think I'm biased or something as I review quite a lot, but lots of other reviewers do the same. Not all of us can just drop 10 grand on a Rolex, as nice as that would be. Anyway, before you comment intro too long, let's get into this review. First category, design. Oof, San Martin might be off to a tricky start with this one. Okay, so originality. Yeah, this gets a zero. This is obviously a homage based on the Tudor Black Bay GMT with the Pepsi bezel, as opposed to the newer GMT model, the Black Bay Pro. Before anyone pipes up in the comments whinging about homage watches, you're right. You're totally right. We're all wrong. You're far more popular and handsome than we'll ever be. And frankly, that Porsche does not make you look like a virgin, despite what people are saying behind your back. Okay. Is he gone? Right, let's crack on. So this is the definition of unoriginal design from San Martin, so it can't really take any credit for the dial proportions either, which we'll come on to in a sec. They can take credit for a couple of welcome deviations from the original Tudor Black Bay GMT, however. Firstly, the brush sides of the case, which are polished on the originals and can be prone to looking more scratched up than a brushed finish. Secondly, San Martin have gone with a traditional oyster style bracelet over Tudor's faux rivets, which might have as much to do as cost with anything else. Plenty of San Martin models carry this bracelet configuration after all. These deviations mightn't be original per se, but at least show some independent thought on the part of San Martin. That can't really be said of the dial. The big, bold snowflake hour hand, the applied indices, and even the Clifford Red GMT hand are easy to see at a glance. Even the date, which I always think looks comically small without a cyclops on these sort of models, is easy enough to pick out. And my eyes are, for want of a better word, Anyway, that's three out of three for this category, but San Martin can't really take any credit for that because it's kind of all linked into the design, so unfortunately I just have to give it a zero. Them's the brakes. But I can still spot that Pepsi bezel, glasses or no glasses which hasn't done me any favours in terms of this watch's versatility. For those of you who wear bold, bright primary colours, 
I have two questions. Why do you dress like that Ryan's World kid? And do you have a Pepsi GMT watch? If you don't, maybe you should. If you're more like me and Wednesday Adams and you prefer just wearing black or maybe more muted, earthy tones, then this watch with the Pepsi GMT bezel can look a little bit like something that you're wearing for like a stag do, and especially on that NATO provided. With my grey top and blackish jeans, it looks like my watch is in Oz and the rest of my outfit is still stuck in Kansas. Possibly at a Make America Great Again rally. Yeesh. So I'm giving it a 2 for versatility. The aluminium bezel insert at least doesn't scream in the same way a ceramic one would. And to be honest, some people might not have quite as dour a wardrobe as I do. So a 2 overall. That's a shaky start, but we are just getting started. Now the movement. The movement is the Seiko NH34, a GMT movement that's been flooding the market lately and is now as common as hot singles in my area. It hacks, it hand winds, and has a GMT hand that you can operate independently, like so. I have mine set to an hour ahead. So I know what time it'll be an hour from now. Handy, right? But typically travellers, the aeroplane kind, not the kind that your dad accused of stealing his copper piping back in 2007. They'd set their GMT hour hand, the red one, to their home time, and the hour hand to their local time. That way you can track two time zones. Let's say it's 20 past 10 a.m. local time here in um, New York. Now to set the second time zone, we use our 24 hour bezel and our GMT hand. So let's just say we're gonna track London. If it's 10.20 a.m. or so here in New York, that makes it 3.20 p.m. or so in London, which we'll call my home time. So I just keep track of London, which actually is conveniently on GMT, with my 24 hour bezel and the GMT hand, and then my local time in New York, conventionally with the dial indices. Does that make sense, kind of? I feel like I've just completely mansplained it, so apologies in that case, but there we go. The crown action is great, it's smooth, there are satisfying clicks as you pull it out at each different position. And winding it is a joy. The GMT hand moves with really good kind of shudders. That sounds weird, but shudders can be good. Good shudders? Gooders? No, no, just good shudders. So in terms of functionality, it's a solid three. The accuracy too is fantastic. This beats at 21,600 beats per hour and barely one of them misses. It's running at minus 1.5 seconds per day, which is well within cost parameters. That could be because San Martin regulates them, and it might also help when it comes to the price a little bit later on too. So again, it's a three. The other bonus of this is it's a relatively affordable and now common Seiko movement. That means that when the time does come, you can get it serviced relatively easily and cheaply. And if the movement is truly knackered, you could just replace it with another one. So that's quite reassuring in terms of long-term reliability. So overall, the movement gets a nine out of 10. Congratulations to Seiko, I guess? Now the price, which might depend on the region, but I got this here in the UK for $329 or about £270 after shipping and taxes. That was from the Watch Dives store. I'm going to leave a link to their store below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that and I don't have a discount code. You can always tell them I sent you and tell them to send me free watches. This is a full stainless steel watch on a bracelet with a Seiko movement. A fully milled clasp a true 24-hour bi-directional bezel with aluminium Pepsi bezel insert and a domed sapphire crystal with AR coating. For $329, that's a hell of a deal. Three points to Griffin, uh, San Martin. The warranty is also three years. Three years? I've had relationships that haven't lasted that long. In fact, I haven't had any relationships that have lasted that long. Anyway, three for the warranty. But what about brand cachet? Well, it's a weird one. San Martin is kind of the darling of AliExpress, which is like saying you're the most photogenic person in a leper colony. AliExpress brands are getting better, but they're also getting more expensive. That said, San Martin do make a sexy leper. Compared to a lot of their competition, they really are a cut above. I hate to be that guy though. I still don't know about the logo. It looks good on the crown and bracelet, but don't you think it looks a bit diminutive on the dial? 
It's about the size of one of the indices. I think some width would help. I've been told the same thing myself. And really, brands in the watch industry appropriately need time. Young brands are like interns. They look stylish and new, plus you're probably not paying nearly enough for them. But there's something reassuring about a company man that's been making watches since Moses wore short pants, like Tudor. So that's a one for brand cachet, but I am gonna award a bonus point here for that warranty. Three years, no words. That's a solid eight out of 10 for the price. On to the final round, execution. Uh, my girlfriend suggested this might be a bit vague, to which I said, have we been together three years yet? So let me explain. This is the finishing and comfort of the watch, plus the crystal and the loom. Essentially, it's the execution of the design. Okay, so firstly, how is the finishing? Like I alluded to earlier, San Martin is a cut above in terms of finishing at the price. The head of the watch is all brushed, but for the edges along the top, which are polished. And those transitions between brushed and polished facets are impeccable, honestly flawless. The same is true too for the clasp, which bears that logo, and that's applied and that's also in steel. The case back is nothing to write home about. Oh. That said, the radial brushing is clean and there are no signs of any scuffs or coarseness whatsoever. Nice job. Ditto the bracelet. It looks great, it feels great. The brushing is tidy, and while the lack of any other finishing on the links might be a bit dull to some, it's all consistent and smooth, with no sharp edges to speak of either. Okay, the bezel, as many of you will have already commented below before even getting to this point in the video, yeah, it's misaligned. This bezel sits slightly to the left. I don't accept this from Seiko, I don't accept it from Pagani Design, and I certainly don't accept it from San Martin, especially if they're gonna keep creeping their prices up. Not okay. Ooh, you're hard, showing off. It's a shame, because the bezel action is possibly the best I've felt, second only to Tudor themselves. The clicks are higher pitched going clockwise than they are anti-clockwise, but nonetheless, rotating this is a joy. And if you do want to track other time zones, then doing so will have the added bonus of giving you a little bit of ASMR action. Ooh, baby. So that's a two for the finishing. How does it wear on the wrist? Sized up for my six and a half inch wrist, this weighs 137 grams, which is noticeable, but not overbearing. There are four micro adjustment holes, which I always prefer to a dive extension, but no half links. This might be something that San Martin could start including, especially if they are up in those prices. The Watch Dives website where I purchased this, lists this as a 39 millimeter watch, but it ain't. As I said to a friend of mine who asked what my least favorite Judd Apatow film is, this is 40. What, too tenuous? They're all tenuous. That doesn't change how wearable this thing is. That 40 millimeter diameter, coupled with the 48 millimeter lug to lug length and the very manageable 13 millimeter case height makes it a very wearable piece on most wrists. That relatively svelte 13 millimeter case height is likely due to the 100 meters of water resistance. That mightn't be much on paper, especially when it's a watch that looks like a diver, but I rarely go any deeper than about two or three meters anyway, so it's a welcome sacrifice as far as I'm concerned. That's a solid three for the comfort then, but how does this hold up in both bright light and pitch darkness? San Martin have a reputation for producing watches with looms so bright it hurts your eyeballs to look directly at it. That's not really the case here. It's apparently BGW9 Super Luminova, and while it does glow and has decent longevity, it doesn't have that immediate potency that other models from the brand that I've tried have had. Don't get me wrong, it's still good, but just not San Martin good with that usual blindingly good loom. They've set the bar high, so I guess you might say that they're a victim of their own success in this regard. The Sapphire Crystal, however, is still as reliable as ever. In fact, I get less flecked on this than I've had from other San Martins, so that's to be commended. The AR coating is on the underside of the crystal, and I assume it's clear, as I've not detected any blue haze. And the distortion at the edges of the crystal, beautiful. Plus the doming on the crystal isn't so pronounced that it alters legibility. I'm feeling a two here. 
Now let's tally up the scores. So a two out of 10 for design, that's kind of self-explanatory. The movement gets a nine, helped in no small part to it being a Seiko movement and being regulated to within COSC standards. The price is a winner, thanks to the warranty and the specs you get for your money. Eight out of 10 there. And lastly, the execution, which gets a seven out of 10. Great finishing and dimensions, but a misaligned bezel insert. I thought we left that to Seiko. That gives this San Martin Tudor Black Bay GMT homage a pretty good 7 out of 10. That feels fair for a watch with this much on the spec list, but which still has a few glaring errors, namely the bezel misalignment, the branding and the design or lack thereof. But what do you think? Would you pick up one of these watches? Have you picked up one of these watches? And does the new scoring system make sense? It definitely helped me organize my thoughts about this watch a lot better and I think still gives you a really comprehensive view of what to look out for when you're buying a watch. Anyway, please let me know down in the comments and please do subscribe and tell your family, tell your friends, tell your enemies even, because every single subscriber helps out the channel and will mean more videos more often. Thanks so much for getting this far and I'll see you next time.